Hey Morgan everyone! So for today's video, I am going to be doing a comprehensive guide on products I'd recommend if you're planning on going to Korea or if you are in Korea. Now the reason I'm doing this video is because back in the day, when I first started my YouTube channel and started talking about Korean beauty, one of the things I remember was I was really overwhelmed by the products, the categories, the brands. There was just a lot to take in and especially if you're going to Korea for the first time. I know for me, I did a lot of research prior to going, but this is kind of a video if you want to just have like one video or one resource or you don't want to spend too much time looking into products, you just want someone to tell you what you should look at and what you should buy and what you should look for, this is kind of the video for you. Now the beauty of today versus when I first started my channel is that a lot of products, Korean beauty products are now readily available online. The international reach is a lot wider than it used to be. So for all of these products, I will link them down below and make a list because this video is gonna be very product heavy. I will list it down below to make it a little bit easier as well as include some links for those of you guys who don't have the opportunity to go to Korea because I realize not everyone is going to be going to Korea. So I think I have like 12 <laughs> categories. So without much further ado, let's go out and get started. Now I think this first category is one of the most notable features of Korean beauty and that is cushion foundations. Cushion foundations are basically a Korean thing if not solely a Korean thing. So even cushion foundations that you're seeing that are created by Western companies or any non-Korean brands all cushion foundations are actually manufactured in Korea. Starting at the more affordable end, we have Misha. Now this is one of my favorite cushion foundations. This is the original Tension Pack in Perfect Cover. And I like this because I personally go for a higher coverage cushion foundation. I just tend to like that in general with my foundations. And this one has a nice finish. I don't find it overly sticky and it just covers really nicely. So it's something that I recommend. They have other versions of their original cushion available. So if you want to go for a more dewy look, they have one of those available. Now another leader in cushion foundations is Laneige. Now Laneige is one of those very notable brands, so much so that they have them available in some retailers in the United States. I'm not sure about anywhere else. Now Laneige is one of the original cushion foundation brands, at least to me, that became famous. So they're definitely well known for their innovation when it comes to their cushion foundations. They also have a little bit of a wider range of shades. And then the last brand that I'm going to be talking about as far as cushion foundations is definitely my high-end choice, and it's Hera. Now Hera makes some of my all-time favorite cushion foundations. So if you want to splurge on a cushion foundation, I would highly recommend them. And they're absolutely beautiful. I have two different ones here. Now the first one is their original cushion. So this one launched before this one that I'm gonna be talking about. This is the UV Mist Cushion, the Ultra Moisture. I love this cushion foundation. It is so good. I've talked about it in the past. I recommended it in my top five high-end cushion foundations and that's absolutely amazing. Highly recommend that. But if you're looking for something that is also <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. I love their Hera Black Cushion. Now the nice thing about the Black Cushion is it is available in some darker shades. So I wear shade 25. This matches my skin perfectly. And this to me is like the ultimate perfect cushion foundation. Like it's absolutely beautiful. The finish is gorgeous. I love how long lasting it is. And I have actually a full review on this if you want to check that out and I'll link that down below. But cushion foundations. Now another product you should definitely pick up while you're in Korea is an aloe vera gel. Now I know what you're thinking, can't I just get aloe vera gels at home? But these are so much better. Yeah. <laughs> now Korea for some reason has really leveled up the aloe vera game in general. And I think it's because aloe vera is really one of those skincare ingredients and skincare products that is just super effective and helpful for a lot of different skin types. So universally, it's just a great skincare product. And I have two here that I'd recommend. Now this first one's from Nature Republic. This is the Soothing and Moisture Aloe Vera Gel. Now the reason I recommend this is because this is essentially the OG aloe vera gel. So this for Nature Republic was a popular seller, it was a best seller. This is like one of the products that they'll put outside of their stores in stacks because it's just one of those products that does really well for them. And rightfully so, this is a great aloe vera gel. However, I think I personally like this one better. This one's from Holica Holica. This is the 
Aloe 99% Soothing Gel. Now you'll notice that there are going to be a lot of aloe vera gels in Korea. Like pretty much, if not every single brand will have their own. So I really don't think you could go wrong. I think there are a lot of great ones out there. These are just two that I'd recommend and yeah, just a nice little affordable type of product you could pick up. And these are also the type of products that are multitaskers. So you can use these on your face, you could use these on your body, your nails. I think people even use these in their hair. I don't personally, but yeah, they're just great because they're awesome. Who doesn't love aloe vera? Now the next product category I'm gonna be talking about are essences. Now for me, before I got into Cream Beauty, I had no idea what essences were and I still get a lot of questions about essences, so much so that I actually made a full video on them. It's like a three minute video, it's part of my skincare shorts series, so I will link that down below in case you guys want more information on essences, but just take it from me. Essences are amazing. They totally were a game changer for me when it came to skincare products and completely changed my skin texture, made my skin a lot softer and supple. So some that I'd recommend, obviously the first one, if you have watched my channel, you guys know, one of my favorite ones is the Misha Time Revolution, the first treatment essence. Now I actually don't have one on me at the moment, which is like shocking, because I usually have backups of that. Um, but I would definitely recommend that. And some other essences I absolutely love is the Iope one. This is the Bio Essence Intensive Conditioning. Now Iope is a little bit pricier. I wouldn't say it's like high end, but it's definitely a little bit pricier than the Misha one, but definitely still amazing and super good. I have actually been using the one from Iope also for several years. And then we have this one from Skin and Lab. This is the Bio Activating Essence, which is also really nice. Essences for me, I would say are definitely a Korean thing. So if you're in the market for trying out new skincare products, Check out an essence. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. There's an essence out there for everyone. <laughs> now the next product category I'm gonna be talking about are glittery eyeshadows. Now again, I know it seems really weird for me to be talking about glittery eyeshadows, but Korea knocks glittery eyeshadows out of the park. Now it's, it really is because it's very trendy to have glittery, shimmery lids. Korean makeup is not so much into like super pigmented, like matte smoky type of looks. Instead, it's more bright and vibrant and glittery and shimmery and very girly. So that's why I think they do a really good job with glittery eyeshadows. Now, obviously, as you can tell, I'm a big fan of these guys here. I pretty much have, I wouldn't say every shade, but I have a lot of a lot of their shades. And these are from Aritam. These are the Shine Fix Eyes. These have been a popular and a favorite of mine for quite some time, pretty much since day one. But some other glittery eyeshadows that I love which are in more of a liquid format. So for those of you guys who really like those Stila glitter eyeshadows, I don't know exactly what they're called, but you know what I mean. I'll put a picture up somewhere. These are good dupes and they are affordable, much more affordable than the Stila ones. I really like this Holika Holika one. This is the Magic Inside, I guess that's what this is called. Obviously these come in different shades, by the way. I'm just showing you one. Um, so I like the Holika Holika ones, those are really nice. And then I also like these ones from Peri Pera. These are the Sugar Twinkle Eyes. And yeah, both of these are excellent long lasting and I don't find that the glitter like ends up on my face by the end of the day. They do a really good job of adhering to the eyes and staying put, so glittery eyeshadows, my friend, the glittery eyeshadows. Ooh! This next category I love, <laughs> and that's nail stickers. <laughs> now nail art is super trendy in Korea. Like I feel like whenever there's a popular nail trend, it originated from Korea. Like, let me just put that out there. This is like a really bad drug habit. We just entered the gate. We just opened Pandora's box. <laughs> We're gonna enter ourselves into rehab. <laughs> like, what are you checking yourself in for? Nail <laughs> addiction. <laughs> Can I touch him? Yeah. <laughs> and because of that, nail products are very popular as well. Now, if you're like me, I am not very talented with my nails, should we say. I can basically paint my nails and then call it a day. I can never do like anything fancy. And so for me, I'm a big fan of like press-on nails or nail stickers. Now, these ones, my friends, 
are amazing. Now this is from Misha, these ones in particular. These are the Dashing Diva type, and Dashing Diva actually works with a lot of the different road shops in Korea, so you can go to like Auditom and find Dashing Diva. Etude House works with Dashing Diva, Innisfree, all of these different road shops. So basically just for look for Dashing Diva. Now I know it sounds like a bit of a hyperbole when it says these will last up to 14 days. These will actually last up to 14 days. They're also wrinkle free, which I don't know if you guys have had a lot of experience with nail stickers, but wrinkles are a problem and they're something that I definitely struggle with. So I'm actually wearing some of them right now. These are also from the same brand and I've had these on for a week and as you can see, they are in great condition. Actually, you can see where my nail's growing out. That's how long I've had these on. And actually, I will probably take these off before they're ready to come off, just purely for the fact I'll get tired of them. But yeah, definitely check these out if you're into nails. I love them and so much easier than, you know, having to paint your nails, wait for them to dry, glue some stickers on or stones on, whatever you're gonna do. Just buy yourself some nail stickers, do yourself a favor. No, don't be scared by the next product category that I'm gonna be talking about. Now, snail skincare is a super popular type of product category, skincare category, I don't know what you wanna to refer to it as, in Korea, and I guess that's actually more of an ingredient, but I had never tried anything snail related before I went to Korea. Honestly, I was like, that's disgusting. That sounds like something I will never be interested in. The idea behind snail products is because, you know, snails, they like glide over really rough surfaces and then they heal really fast, so apply that to your skin. Voila! <laughs> One snail product I really like is from Myzon. Actually, Myzon makes a lot of really good snail products. And this is their multi-function formula all-in-one snail repair cream. So snail's actually really good for those of you guys who are suffering with acne-related issues. So inflammation, scarring, healing, repair, anything like that. Snail's really good for. Personally, for me, I use it for my dry skin. So it's, it's actually really good for pretty much all different skin types. But definitely check out some snail products, snail sheet masks. Whatever you wanna do, just experiment a little bit. Don't be intimidated, don't be scared. Actually buy some for your friends and family and I'm sure they'll love it too. So the next product category is actually kind of like a trend I'm going to be covering and that is for your lips. <laughs> and that's the gradient lip trend. Now if you have ever investigated any Korean makeup trends, I'm sure you've heard of the gradient lip look. Now obviously a very popular tool for that are lip tints. So some lip tints I really like are from Etude House. The Dear Darling tints are great. I also have it in the little popsicle one. Um, I really like Peri Peri's Parity Ink tints. I have the velvet ones as well as the original. Both of these are great. The velvet ones are obviously just more of a semi-matte type of formula. And then I love my oldie but goodie. This is the Skin Food Tomato Cool Jelly Tint, which I it's like one of my favorite lip tints and longest running favorite lip tints. But if you're lazy <laughs> and you just want a product to do it for you, there are also products out there. And the most popular one by far is from Laneige, and this is the two-tone lip bar. As you can see, they have the two different colors in the lipstick itself, so you basically just glide these on and you have a beautiful gradient lip look. But a lot of other brands have their own versions of the two-tone lip bars. One that I'd recommend is from Secret Key, and these are their two-toned glow. As you can like, look at the packaging. Does it look reminiscent of anything? <laughs> But they also have the two-tone idea going on and also if you just explore a little bit You'll see a lot of other brands have them as well But yeah, just something to look out for and check into if you love that look Sleeping masks now if you don't know what a sleeping mask is essentially it is to be part of your skin now sleeping masks are definitely at least in my opinion a Korean thing I actually didn't really see any other like brands outside of Korea coming out with their own sleeping masks until Korean beauty started becoming popular. So yeah, I, I credit Korean brands for that. Now the original, again, OG sleeping mask that I think is one of the most popular Korean skincare products to this day is from Laneige. This is the water sleeping mask. They carry this at Sephora. They carry this at a lot of different retailers. But another one that I really like is from Make Prem. Now Make Prem is another one of those skincare brands that I absolutely love. Pretty much every single product that they come out with, they do a really nice job at formulating very gentle products that are great for sensitive skin types. And this is the Radiance Peeling Sleeping Mask. So this is something that I use at the end. Actually, their moisturizer, which I'm gonna show you really quick since I'm talking about that brand. Oh, oh, oh. This guy here. <laughs> I'm going a little off script here, but 
stick with me. This is the Safe Me Relief Moisture Cream. This is one of my favorite moisturizers. And <laughs> I mentioned it like a thousand times probably in this video. I have dry sensitive skin and this has been like a lifesaver for me. What am I talking about next? Sun creams. Where are my sun creams? Yee! Okay, now before I started using Korean sunscreens, I never realized it was a thing for sunscreens to not be sticky, to not have a white mask, to not make my skin feel congested and overwhelmed. I just thought that was the natural tendency of sunscreens. And then I started using Korean ones and I realized, boy, was I wrong. Now the first sunscreen I'd recommend is from Etude House. And this is the Sun Prize Must Daily. This has an SPF of 50 plus PA triple plus. This one's awesome. Um, it goes on my skin very nicely. It doesn't take a lot to rub it in. Very lightweight. The next one I'd recommend is from Innisfree. This is the Perfect UV Protection Cream. This one in particular is the long lasting version for dry skin. So um, it's water resistant. It is moisturizing on my skin. My skin doesn't dry out by the end of the day. And again, it lays really nicely on my skin, which is why I absolutely love this guy. And last but not least, we have the Aloe Soothing Sun Cream. This is from Cosrx. I think this would work really well for people with oily skin as well, so it's a very popular one. A lot of people enjoy this, and a lot of people enjoy Cosrx in general, so. So excellent sun cream. Actually, as you can see, these ones are empty. <laughs> I'm showing you guys empty tubes, because I love these. I need to pick more of these up. Who am I kidding? You going to Korea? Can you pick me up more of those? <laughs> okay, this is definitely a personal favorite of mine, but I would not be doing this video justice if I didn't talk about these because since this is supposed to be like a beginner's resource for Korean beauty, um, I have to talk about these. But I know you guys have heard me talk about these a thousand times on my channel. Air puffs. <laughs> now what air puffs are, are they the little puffs that come in cushion foundation. So if you buy a cushion foundation, they usually come with one. Sometimes they come with an extra one as a refill. The reason I love Air Puffs is because they're essentially like better than a beauty blender. I use them to apply my foundation every single day and they just make my foundation melt into my skin. So they work well with all sides of foundation. I use them for blushes, for highlighters. I use them to blend out my gradient lips. I'll actually put a video down below of me talking about different ways I use Air Puffs. Um, because they're that amazing and these are a super affordable like when I go to Korea I buy just literally like 20 of these so yeah definitely go into any store pick up a couple pick up some for your friends share around the <laughs> air puff love and there are a couple bucks to pop so I've been filming this video for a long time I'm getting loopy one other type of product you should buy when you're in Korea and that sucks <laughs> now I don't know about you guys, but um, I really like socks and Creo makes really cute, cheap socks. So these are for some reason really popular in Korea. I'm sure they're popular elsewhere, elsewhere but I just stock up on them, <laughs> stock up on socks when I'm in Korea. And they look like this, or these are what they look like. So pretty much if you go anywhere where there are tourists or any type of popular shopping neighborhood in Korea, Iwa, Hongdae, Myeongdong, <laughs> Um, in Sedong, like all these popular neighborhoods, they'll have sock shops or sock vendors. Do not pay more than a thousand won for them though. That's the max you should pay. But yeah, they're dollar socks. They're really cute. I always get like 10 of them. And then they have these cute little animals on them. And these are like the socks I wear. <laughs> so I like the ones with the ears. <laughs> I like how I'm going into socks with you guys. I like the ones with the ears because when I wear like my Converse or something, the ears kind of pop out of the top of the Converse. And then they look really cute. Take a couple thousand won out there, buy yourself some socks. <laughs> Have a nice day. Okay, that got weird. <laughs> well, <laughs> this has been a long video. I regurgitated a lot of information out to you guys, but like I said, I wanted to do like a one-stop shop resource, guide, whatever you want to call it, video for those of you guys who are just like, I want to watch one thing and know what I should buy when I go to Korea or what I should buy online if I want Korean stuff. So that's my video. <laughs> As always, I hope you guys are happy and healthy and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family. I hope I see you guys in Montreal and if not, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.